task flows and how we can pass the parameter in the task flow and how we can call a task flow from another task flow. So I'm going to create an, a new application. We we'll go to file, new. I will check these default values as it is and click on finish. Okay, so we have created a new application called Task Loop Forum. Now, first I will create some ADFBC components. So I will go to new model ADFBC and I am going to create a business component from the table. So I am going to select this option, click OK. I have already created a default HR XC schema. So I will just uh, use that copy connection and click OK. Okay, yeah, you will select some query here. We have selected department entity object here, and I will also need uh, employee. Okay, let's move ahead. We need an updatable view object. Okay, selected. We don't need it, so it's blank as of now. And we will make sure that you, you will check this checkbox to make available these view objects or entity objects into the application model. So this is the default application module name. I will click next and finish. Okay. Now in our application, we are going to create uh, one task flow and we are going to invoke one task flow from another and we are passing, we will pass in parameter from one task flow to another. So as you can see, we, we, are, uh, we have created uh, some default uh, view objects and view links. Now click on the view controller, new. JSF ADF task flow which will create an ADF task flow here. I will click OK. I will name as uh, department. So I will create as a bounded task flow, but uh, I will will not create with as a page fragment. So I will just uncheck it and uh, create it. Okay. So I'm going to drag drop a view here. We will name as department. Uh, and we can also do that. I'm go, I'm uh, this is the employee view object, so I'm clicking clicking here, and I'm going to and this is the default query of this view object. I'm going to write a uh, I'm going to modify this query. As a weird clause in the query, and we will check whether this query is valid. Okay, this query is valid. Click apply. Okay, and we will create a department ID here. Okay, all right, so we have created a bind variable here, and that's it. Now we will go to our task flow. You can see we will have a uh, red error box. We will click to create a page here. Okay, we will leave the default values as it is. Create a page here. Okay, so I will go to the data control here. And this is our application module and I'm going to track drop and department as a table. So I will click ADF table. We have some default values. I will say so select in a single. We can we can also have some features like sorting and okay, we want sorting, we want filtering, and I will select as okay. So we will create a uh, table here. Okay. Now, important thing is, I will I will select a command link. 
I'm not going to create a button here so uh, we will we will do uh, some action on the link so I have drag and drop a command link here. I will shut a little like this. All right. So if you can see, uh, I have put the input text inside the command link, and I will remove the text of this command link. So it will display the text as the value of the department ID. Okay. All right. Now we will use set action listener property, which will set uh, this value. I mean, when any of the user will create click on this link, the value of this row or maybe the department ID will be stored into the page flow scope. So I'm going to set action listener. I'm going to try to. It's asking for some values, so. ID all right and we have to give some value so we will just copy after that we will click here and we will select the value of the input text here and go to the set action listener and select it here so what we are doing here uh, in the set action listener uh, when user will click this link a value of this uh, current department ID will be stored into that page flow scope and department ID variable. Okay, we are done. Now we will again go to the department XML. Now we will track up this task flow call here. It's asking me that ID is not unique, so department one. Okay, so I've just track drop a task flow here. I'm will name as uh, let's see employee. Uh, also, I will have employee. All right, and this is the employee XML. And here, uh, what we are going to do, we will go to this employee view object and go to the operation. Select this execute with params of the employee V object and drag top on the task flow. And here we will select as uh, the value should be page flow scope dot department department ID. So I will write like department ID. So we are setting the values as it should be like this. Click OK and uh, default activity. Make sure that you should have a default activity as execute with params. Then we will again try to top a view here and uh, we will name as employee data. We will create a control flow case from this to this. Okay, now click here, blank click, okay. Alright, so I'm going to try to drop employee table here and as table okay and i will not select all these columns so i will just make sure i will delete a few of them just to make sure that we will show the department id so we are able to see uh, for the corresponding department id we are able to see the data so I will click okay all right we will also 
uh, surround with some panel group layout to make group to look better. Alright. Now I will use a button to navigate back. I want this button on the table above. Okay, and we will name as And after that, now we will again go to the task flow, uh, this employee task flow, and uh, yeah, and here we will have a task flow written, and here we will define some navigation place as that. So it will uh, return to the calling task flow. Go to this employee data JHPS and on this back to department button, we will uh, define this action as back. Action as back. Alright. So, We should have some navigation keys from department to task flow. This one. Okay. Yeah. So here, if we, uh, we should name something called. Go to the department JHPS page and on the command link which we have created in which we are setting up the value of the current flow department ID into the page flow scope. Go here, select the command link and select as a navigation flow. Alt I and uh, all right. So it will default as a task flow return call. So now we are all done, uh, just click on the save button and we will run the, the task flow. So you select this. And we have started the application, so it will take some time. Okay, so we have done everything now. Uh, we have created a task flow. We are invoking a task flow from one task flow to another task flow. And now the another thing, another task we the left is we have to pass the parameter to the task flow. So we will go to the department uh, XML and this is the task flow we are invoking. Just select this. Go to that uh, parameter. Yes, we can also. This is the task flow definition for the employee and I will just expand it. Alright. So here we here we can define some manage bean, but in this demo we are not going to do that. So I'm going to write it a, a name of the input parameter. So here we should define the name of the input parameter of the task flow and here we will define that. And uh, value should be we will open suspicion okay, builder and select that. Now we are almost set. So if you can see, this is the default activity. This is the page, and this is the task flow return, and this is another task flow we are invoking. So we'll just click save and run it, and it's here. Okay, so now our application is running and we are able to see the department page and here we have different department ID and whenever we click on any of the link here and we can see the corresponding uh, employee data here if you can see we this is have the same department ID for all the employees we again go back to the department it will invoke the task flow written call and we are again back to the same page and if you can see we click on another department id called 70 
and we will have it added up our button ready so we have shown uh, that today how we can uh, create a task flow how we can invoke a task flow and how we can uh, pass a parameter thank you for watching